Time to get rid of your swollen feet. No one wants swollen feet. No. Now, hopefully you did your homework and you watched the video that we made before mm. that talked about causes of swollen feet. Right, which is a big part of I think treating your swollen feet. Is ideally, you want to try to get a diagnosis. And sometimes you can have multiple diagnoses at the same time. That's right. And, and you need the diagnosis first because that keeps doctors employed. That's what we do. We come up with diagnoses. <laughs> right. Diagnoses. Right. And fortunately, for swollen feet, with some of the diagnoses, there are treatments that can make your swollen feet better. And you'll be glad to know that most of it is not just a pill. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Which is a good thing. Okay, so let's start with, we're going through the list of the causes of swollen feet that we talked about in our other video, one by one to try to give you some ideas about the treatment. So let's start with number one. Trauma. Okay. If you've had trauma that causes your swollen ankle, swollen feet, then the most important thing is going to be time. Right. Because swelling is one of the first things the body does when it's trying to heal an injury. Yep. And with time, the swelling should resolve. And that time length will vary on the severity of trauma. Right. The location of the trauma yeah. and the location and, and the situ situation with your vascular system. Yeah, so you have a broken ankle or if you have a broken foot or a sprained ankle or you've had surgery. Sometimes it can be out to a year and some portion of it may be permanent. When you have damage to your bones, the soft tissues around them get damaged as well. So that could be the vessels, the lymphatics. So sometimes you'll end up with permanently swollen feet on, say, on one side. Mm -hmm. By far the most common cause of swollen feet that I see is caused by me when I do a total knee replacement or a total hip replacement post-operatively. Right. And that is going to be time. Yes. Okay. How long do you usually tell people it can take? For a total knee and hip replacement? Yeah, how long before your swelling goes? I usually say six months. Yeah, I'd say six months or more. Yeah, the first kind of six weeks are brutal, but it usually gets better and then time they slowly can fit their foot into their shoe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pregnancy. So this is not a medical condition, but it is associated with swollen feet. So one of the things that's very common is when you lie on your right side, the baby pushes on your inferior vena cava causes swelling. So some people say, sleep on the left side, that'll be one thing to help. But when you are pregnant, sometimes you can develop something called preeclampsia or eclampsia where your blood pressure becomes dysregulated because of the pregnancy. This is a much more important issue and not something for you to try to solve on your own. You need to talk to your doctor that will relate to the swelling, but also they're gonna give you some very specific instructions, often bed rest for this. There you go. Okay. Okay, the next thing we talked about was certain medications can okay. cause swelling in your feet or ankles. Um, that's a complicated one to treat because you may be right. taking these medications for another condition and you may need them, uh, but one of the side effects is the swelling of the feet or the swelling of the ankle. So that one's you're going to have to talk to your doctor about to see if there's an alternate medication you can try yep. or a different dose you can try, right. uh, but that is one of the more complicated causes of swollen feet that you have to deal with. And sometimes your pharmacist can have suggestions and sometimes you take one pill to deal with the effects of the other pills. Sometimes there are medications that can reduce the swelling to deal with the swelling you got from the first pill, which is unfortunate, um, but sometimes it's necessary. That's your water pill. A lot of people on the your water pill, it's a diuretic. I'm on the water pill. I'm on my water pill. Yeah. It's a diuretic that makes you urinate a lot. Diuretic. Okay, infection. So when you have an infection, you often will have associated swelling in that area and the treatment is treat the infection. That's so it. either with oral antibiotics, sometimes topical antibiotics, sometimes intravenous antibiotics. And often, depending on the type of infection you have, the swelling can persist for a little while afterwards, but the main stay of treatment is treating the infection. And uh, actually, if you, you, you also would want to treat the swelling if you can too with a compression sock or a tensor bandage or something yes. like that because um, when you have a lot of swelling, it's a vicious cycle. It's hard to get rid of the infection right. when there's a lot of swelling. So sometimes we try and get rid of that swelling with some... Oh. And we would say, generally speaking, rest, ice, compression, elevation, these are standards of St. John's Ambulance Care and to deal with any type of swelling, really. Actually, the other day in my fracture clinic, a patient asked me, he had a sprained ankle, and then told him the diagnosis and the treatment. He goes, well, what do you think about rice? What's your take on rice? And I was like, no. well, I don't know, brown rice or what? I seriously thought he was talking about, is, should I be eating brown rice or white rice? What did you tell him? Brown rice. Yeah, whole grain rice. And then he kind of looked at me and it clicked. <laughs> Don't it put clicked. rice on your foot. It clicked. It's not going to make the swelling go. If your phone goes into water, though. Oh, actually, that I've done that. That does work. Okay. We've it's gone off on a tangent. Okay. Next one. Blood clot. Yeah, blood okay. clot. Okay, we do see that. Okay. Because a DVT or deep vein thrombosis, also known as a blood clot yep. in your calf or your leg, uh, can happen after surgery. So okay. we do see that stuff. Right. Um, but that can lead to swelling. Right. 
So one you, of the diagnoses sometimes is when, like you have eye got swelling, maybe I have a blood clot. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the presenting signs. signs. Yeah, true. So treat the blood clot. Right, so treating the blood clot with either a clot buster or a blood thinner does not necessarily reduce the swelling. It takes time though for your body to make new veins around where the clot is, and that will slowly reduce the swelling. However, this is another thing that commonly is permanent. If you see someone that's had a DVT in the past, they do have some long-standing persistent swelling. And along that same vein, mm -hmm. wait for it, <laughs> venous insufficiency. So as we age, we have well, we all have one-way valves, but these one-way valves in our veins slowly start to fail with time. So gravity pulls fluid back the wrong way through these one-way veins, one-way valves, and it pulls down in our feet. So this is where, yes, rest, ice elevation, and definitely compression stockings. We have a video about this with one of our vascular surgeons is a great way to address some of this, but this can be a very persistent and debilitating problem. Okay. Um, another cause that we talked about in our other video was yeah. heart failure, heart congestive failure. heart failure. Yes. The heart is a pump, it's trying to pump blood around right. your body and if your pump is not working well, you'll have some blood pooling down in your... How do, uh, how do we treat that? Treat the heart failure. Okay. okay? Uh, there's different causes of heart failure. You have to see your physician, yep. your cardiologist, get your heart failure under control and that should help the swelling of your ankles. And that's commonly going to be medications. Mm -hmm. so that, and of course exercise and yes. cardiac rehabilitation and stuff like that yes. as well. So that will treat the heart failure part. Sometimes you still need to do some of the local symptoms that we talked about before. So the next one is lymphedema. So this is a very difficult, complicated problem that affects many, many people. So lymphedema is when the fluid that's inside of our lymph glands or vessels that brings fluid back to our heart start to slowly fail or become too um, permissive and fluid ends up in our feet. And it can cause breakdown of the skin. It can cause legs that actually leak when you're looking at them. So sometimes compression stockings are not practical for these people. Some people use specialized lymphatic massage where you actually can physically milk some of that fluid out. But this is, this is very problematic for many people. Even some of our joint replacement patients have this and it makes it tricky because of their risk of infection. So yeah, rest, ice compression, elevation, lymphatic massage, and other treatments to try to diagnose the cause. Lymphedema. Lymphedema. Yeah, fun to say, not fun to have. No. Kidney failure. Okay. Real Second failure. failure. Problems with your kidney. Yep. Why? Why does it matter? Why is, it, why is the kidney so kidney important? Kidney is the filter, right? It's going to filter your blood. Uh, you, we've talked about the pump is the heart. Yep. And you've got the filter. And if the filter is not working right, it, it also regulates the amount of fluid that you keep in your body. Yep. Uh, so if it's not filtering or regulating that well, yes. then you could end up with too much fluid on board and because we live on earth gravity will pull that fluid down your feet and ankles swell up so the treatment is treat the underlying kidney issue with your doctor or your nephrologist that might include medications um, and that will help your swelling of your ankles or feet. Right, and sticking on the failure theme, and, and our last one is actually liver failure and, and protein deficiency. So our liver makes protein, particularly one albumin, which is responsible for maintaining osmotic pressure within our vessels. So it's the thing that sits inside your vessels that pulls all the fluid and keeps the blood in there rather than let it leak out through that semipermeable membrane. So people that have liver failure commonly have difficulty with this. And again, you have to address the liver failure, and this can be very complicated mm, for sure. Yeah, that is. So see your specialist. Okay, so there you go. Follow-up video on swelling of yep. the feet and ankles, how to treat it, Yep. depends on the diagnosis, and then you chase after that diagnosis, treat that diagnosis, and then hopefully your swelling of your feet and ankles will get better, recognizing that sometimes it becomes chronic or permanent. Right. There you go. Now you know all about foot swelling. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. You know about rice, too. You know, <laughs> and you know about rice. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.